Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Kasi Vishwanathan Ramanathan, a servant leader practicing Agile and Scrum for the last uh, eight plus years. I have overall uh, 17 plus years of experience in IT and IT enabled services. In this journey, I got a chance to work in a variety of products like uh, insurance, banking, finance, retail, and uh, health industries. So I was glad, glad to be part of a larger transformation projects as well uh, with multinational companies and across globe. I'm working with Tata Consultancies and uh, currently deputed in UK and living with my family. I got uh, two kids and my wife who are my strength and motivating factors to go above and beyond my potentials. I would like to thank uh, APGI and UVCT for providing me the platform to share my knowledge and experience with you all. So looking forward to have a great conversation. Welcome all. Let me share my screen. Just a second. Hope you are able to see my screen. Yep. Great. Okay. So let's begin with the conversation. Let's let's see the conversation um, happening between a son and dad. Okay. Father gives a bowl of grapes uh, to his son, and uh, his son complains compl complains that it is too much uh, for him to eat. Okay. So. Then, then the father says that okay, champ, just just eat half of the uh, half of it. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward conversation, right? Um, so, what can go wrong here, right? So, this is what happened. So, son uh, literally followed his father's instruction and was eating half portion of each grape. So, when the conversations, like very simple conversations, can be easily misinterpreted. Uh, think how much it would be really challenging for a hundred page, uh, you know, with the hundred page uh, requirement document, development team to deliver a software out of it. So imagine how much uh, challenging it would be. If the requirements are written down, uh, it doesn't mean that the user will get what they want, but they will get definitely what was written. So to overcome these challenges uh, between the business and the development teams, uh, in 1998, Alistair Cockburn, um, so uh, he coined this phrase, user story is a promise for conversation. Uh, he did this for his Chrysler Comprehensive Compensation Project. Basically, his idea is to shift the focus from writing to talking. In 1999, um, our, our Kent Beck, who is one of the founders of Extreme Programming, again, Extreme Programming is uh, another framework and an agile umbrella. Um, this was uh, originated there. So the user story, uh, he introduced that in his planning game in extreme programming. Uh, later, the user story concept was adopted in other methodologies like Scrum, which is mostly widely used framework in these modern days. So uh, if you want to know more about Agile and Scrum, we have a dedicated session for that. And uh, Sundar Sri would be sharing those details at the end of the session. Right. Let's get into the business so in the next one hour i would like to take you all through the life cycle of the user story with some exercise um, so that you will get the experience and feel we would start with the flow of requirements here and see where the user story fits in the product backlog then we would continue to see the key elements uh, using this 3c formula and uh, how it, the user story should be constructed we'll do an exercise to learn the um, user story mapping it is a technique to prioritize your requirements and also we will learn how to split the user stories if it is larger so we have an uh, interesting technique called spider and um, how we estimate the user stories and finally we will uh, see some uh, user so user story templates so um, if you have any questions uh, please park it and i will definitely discuss in the uh, at the end of the session right so uh, let's let's start with this thing. Uh, can anyone can anyone unmute your line and let me know why are we creating a software or IT product? Feel free to unmute your line. Why are we creating softwares? Anyone? To me, it's probably user demand. Mm -hmm. 
right? Okay. For me, it's uh, making uh, the complex and uh, difficult uh, tasks easier and getting the things done efficiently and quickly. Right. Absolutely. Uh, to Anybody? provide something online so everyone can collaborate instead of manual processes. Great. Right. So, yeah, all are right. Absolutely. So in order to make our life easy and to achieve the business goals, basically, we create the software or IT products. Right. So the business objective or the idea or vision of the product is the starting point of a requirement. So if you could see this hierarchy map, I have put the idea or vision. So that's where the requirement starts. So generally, idea vision would be a very high level statement with which you wouldn't be able to develop a software out of it because it would have a lot of uncertainties and you will not have enough details to build a software from just with that vision statement. So what we do is we start decomposing that vision statement into themes and then further we decompose that to epics and epics to user stories and tasks. So this is the flow of a requirement. So let's let's take an example uh, to understand or visualize what in real world a theme or epic or a user story or task would be, right? Um, so let's take the banking example. Uh, so my um, idea or vision to create an online banking product is in this pandemic situation, I want customers to manage their money without having to step foot in a bank branch. This is a very high level statement for a development team to pick and develop a software. So what we are going to do is we are going to break this into further into themes. So if you see my idea or vision is creating an online banking. So under themes, what I'm doing is I'm it's themes are nothing but you know group of very high level requirements again through which my vision is accomplished. So teams would address the various components in the product in my say for example online banking product. Uh, it would align with this uh, uh, in line with the business. So in this uh, banking example, uh, as a consumer bank, I offer multiple products to my customers. Say for example, savings account, uh, credit account, uh, loan account, DMAT account, or um, or maybe like you know making your bill payment or IT tax, everything. So all these these are all different themes. Now. Again, we are not going to you know, create software out of it because you need to further break this into epics. So uh, each theme may have multiple epics. If you look into this manage my fund, um, manage my accounts theme, you, you can have n number of ep, uh, you know, epics. Like if you want to manage your savings account as a customer, what you will do? So you will uh, check the balance. What is your balance? You will you will see the transactions, list of transactions that you did. You download the historical statements, or you can do a fund transfer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all these are termed as epics. Again, this may be a larger requirement, which the development team wouldn't be able to deliver within a sprint timeline. So what we are doing is we are breaking this further into user stories or futures which would be small enough so that you, you can deliver within a sprint timeline. So stories would be like, let's take this uh, fund transfer epic. We, uh, we need to add the following features, like uh, say for example, I, uh, if I need to do a fund transfer, I need to add a beneficiary. I can transfer within my own account. I can transfer within the same bank, uh, but for a different customer, I can transfer uh, funds to a different bank. So these are all different futures, which you can term it as an user story. And finally, tasks. Tasks are basically nothing but a technical information or notes for the development team uh, to implement the story or a future as a working software. Here, the tasks can be like, you know, I want to create a page to capture the request. If I want to do a, um, adding a beneficiary, I need to have a UI with some fields in it uh, where I need to, you know, enter the uh, values and that I need to create an API to uh, process this request or integrate with the back end and I need to create a DB to manage or uh, maintain the data. So all these can be considered as task which the development team would be doing it in order to implement the fuse story. So this is the flow of requirements from a vision to a task level. 
So now we have seen like where user story basically fits in this product backlog. So from idea till task, idea till user story is a product backlog. And now you have seen like where the user story fits in the product backlog. Right. Okay. So now we have seen the history and the requirements hierarchy. Let's see this uh, uh, how the user story evolves basically. Okay. Uh, Ron Jeffrey, uh, he's one of the one of the three founders of Extreme Programming. He came up this uh, came up with this concept called 3C: Card, Conversation, and Confirmation. So we write a quick description of the future on a card, uh, talked it through with our Scrum team, then create uh, concrete testable examples to confirm that the future what we develop meets the expectation. Right. This is the uh, idea behind the 3C. Uh, so let's let's see what a card holds, what conversation means, and what confirmation is. So card is nothing but, as you see in this, uh, um, you know, uh, image, card is nothing but a smaller physical, like a sticky notes or a post-it, where you add a brief note about what you want to implement. It will hold just enough information, which will enable the team to get into conversation mode with the product owners or maybe within the team themselves. Uh, a physical card would work if you are a co-located team. Now, in this situation, we all are working remotely. So, like a, for a distributed teams, you have an online tool you can use, like a Jira, uh, through which you can create and maintain your user stories. And uh, this card, user stories, uh, are part of product backlog, uh, would be written by uh, either by the product owners or anyone from the business or BAs. So, this is what card is all about. And now let's see the conversation. Uh, while we were discussing about, uh, you know, on the um, background or the history of the user story, I told you like user stories are meant for shifting the focus from writing to talking, right? So that's where the conversation comes here. Conversations are more important than a written requirement to build a great product because you will gain not only the product owner's view, but also the development team's view to implement a great product. Say I'm a developer, okay, and uh, I'm picking up this card, add a beneficiary, for example, the development. So in order to implement it, I would need further information. Uh, so what I will do is I'll discuss with my POs and fellow team members to see what elements are required. So if I need to add a, uh, you know, beneficiary, what are all the key elements that need to be there in the screen? So I need to capture the beneficiary name. I need to capture the uh, account number. I need to capture the IFSC code or mandatory requirements that I need to add a beneficiary. So I'll be discussing this. What are all the key elements that are really mandatory for me to get this thing? So this is how conversation happens with the card. So the outcome, uh, the outcome of these conversations can be captured as a note or, uh, you know, if you have some uh, something like, you know, if you're drawing something. Um, as part of the conversation to your understanding, you can attach all these uh, outcome uh, to your card. If you are using an online tool like Jira, you have the comment section and you can always attach um, supporting files. You can attach to that user story. This is what a conversation means. And confirmation. Once we all agree with the elements of the future, uh, the user story we would be capturing, uh, what we do is we will be capturing some test scenarios. Okay, now we understood. Okay, what elements needs to be there in our beneficiary screen? So I need to uh, basically come up with some test scenarios to ensure that whatever I have built is correct and will meet the business expectation. So what I will do is uh, I'll come up. I'll um, you know I'll capture some test test scenarios which can be executed to confirm whether the expect uh, whether uh, we get the expected expected results or outcome we term this as a acceptance criteria to confirm whether the story was implemented correctly we have a technique called bdd so bdd is nothing but uh, behavior driven development um, maybe like you know if you if you can see in the slide uh, the format is like given when then structure given some precondition when an action triggers or occurs then some post condition. So let me give you some example. If we take our user story transfer funds to other account, okay, this is an user story. I want to give you some test scenario against this user story. 
in this BDD format. So uh, you can say that um, um, given um, I have $100 in my account, when I initiate the transfer for $200, then I should be told about my insufficient funds to make the transfer. So this is how the uh, acceptance criteria uh, from a BDD would look like. So this is all about 3C. Um, so you will pick up the story from the product backlog. You converse with your uh, uh, with your Scrum team, and then you confirm the understanding, and then mark the user story as ready to play. Right. So let's let let's see a technique to identify how good is your user story. Right. So we call this as invest model. So I stands for uh, independent. Um, so your user story is not having any dependency with any other stories at any point of time for you to implement. I'll be, you know, you you will be able to visualize this. I'll just introduce these terms to you. But anyway, we will be discussing this in the uh, user story mapping. So maybe at that time you will be able to relate what I have told. So we'll do an exercise. So don't worry about it. So N stands for negotiable. So as I told, like you know, uh, we write the user stories in Scott, which would lead to conversation. Basically, if your user story has all the details listed, then there is no room for negotiation, right? And V is valuable. Yeah, so you that user story will add value to the existing product. So you're adding some increment to that product. It user story should add value, whatever user story you're writing. And E stands for estimable. So estimate again, uh, we will talk uh, later how to estimate the user stories. And S stands for uh, um, small so user story should be very small in nature so that you will be able to complete within one iteration and t stands for testable testable means uh, we, we spoke right these acceptance criteria you will be able to execute the test scenarios at once you are done with the uh, story uh, again if you take uh, add beneficiary as uh, user story as an example it is independent um, you don't have any dependencies with other stories it is negotiable as you have the card only with brief information as and as part of a conversation, you would negotiate with the product owner um, uh, on the options to implement. And uh, certainly it is valuable because it is it is enabling you to do the fund transfer and uh, it is estimable and also small enough to complete within a sprint timeline. And we have seen uh, an example with BDD, so it's definitely testable. So um, you would gain more knowledge or information once we are done with the user story mapping and splitting techniques. So let's jump into the user story mapping okay so here uh, what we can do is we can again come up with some example see to understand uh, how generally the uh, mapping happens okay so as i told you user story mapping is one technique for the product owners or the business to prioritize their uh, i mean uh, backlog okay right prioritize the user stories so um let's take some um example of creating an online food portal for our story mapping exercise assume that we own a pizza restaurant and we want to enable the customers to have their favorite food from our restaurant delivered at their doorstep so this is our vision hope you all understand right so my vision is to deliver my uh, you know food from my restaurant to the customers so customers should be able to uh, order the food online and we will deliver it so this is my vision so as a say we are we are the product owners and then we we as a team now going to see what kind of activity or sequence that you think a customer will do as part of ordering a food um so uh, Maybe can anyone tell uh, what you do if if you are a customer and you want to order a pizza online? Anyone? The system should be accessible to accessible online. Mm -hmm. Okay. One uh, can create a user or no as a, as a consumer, registration. Like mm -hmm. Right. Can I do the registration. Cool. Then I can view the uh, menu. Exactly right. Yep. That's right. 
then i okay. can choose the menu perfect then i can uh, choose the payment option absolutely right would uh, select the time slot for delivery right yeah. and uh, then get a confirmation exactly great you're right yeah thanks for that so as a customer if i want to order a food online so what i will do is first i will search for the food as you said like you know i'll visit that website and i'll search for the food uh, and then i will add that food whatever i prefer into the cart that is the place order and then i'll make the payment and finally i'll track where my order is uh, I'm, i'm again this is just a simple example so uh, don't just stick to into it I'm, i just want to give a overview of how a user story mapping uh, with some simple exercise so this is just one maybe this is just few of the uh, activity sequence but i just want to give this so that you all will understand how the flows so now now you what we do in the user story mapping exercises first we will list down the activity of you know in a sequential manner how a customer will get into on the online portal and how we will order it first he will search the food and then we will add it to cart and then make the payment and then track the order this is the sequence now we have identified so all these sequence can be considered as epics again there are multiple ways possible for me to search the food right so ek as you rightly said i maybe i can surf through the menu i can search by category i can search by uh, entering a keyword right so there are many possible options like i have listed down here for placing an order i can add or remove to the cart um, maybe i can place the order even without registration so for me it may not be mandatory i don't want my customers to register their uh, details uh, for ordering a pizza what i will do is i'll, I'll let them allow um, just give their uh, um, billing details and billing address that's it you don't need to register maybe in the first step so i'll add a, a remove cart i will you know um, allow them to um, order as a guest or maybe as you said i want i will give the option to register before they make the payment so so then you have lot of options under payment as you rightly said you have multiple options i can pay by cash i can pay by you know when when the food is delivered i can pay by cash or i can use my net banking or you know debit card or credit card or paypal account or any gift cards there are you know uh, n number of options available to for you to make a payment and finally again as part of tracking i maybe i'll just uh, get a confirmation message or mail initially then maybe i can add a more features like you know uh, the customers can see where my order is for example i place the order then i now i'll be able to see uh, how it is getting progress now it is in kitchen now it is move it is in unpacking now it is in transmit so something like that so a live tracking of your order can be possible so these are all multiple options for me to build my website so most important thing is in agile what we are going to do is we are not going to build entire future and then deliver as a product right hope you all agree so what we will do is first we will identify the mvp right so mvps are the most critical thing which uh, you need to have to start your business with so and you know if you can see that uh, group of user stories in row number 2 i consider these are the key features that i need to start with and then maybe i can add more features into my um, online portal this is how i prioritize the uh, um, you know requirements so what we do here is we list down all the options possible based on the sequence and then discuss and see uh, what we see as an mvp uh, for me to initially release the product in the market and enhance and add more features in the subsequent iterations or sprints so once we map the user stories then you would commit uh, to an iteration so this is how you will see like you know in iteration one iteration or sprint is a sh shorter timeline you all will know about it maybe if not you can uh, you know uh, register for the agile scrum um, sessions you will come to know more about this what an iteration and uh, sprint timelines are right so this is how basically you will um, go with the user story mapping so now uh, we will see how to split the user stories we just experience how to map the user stories uh, maybe uh, while we map there may be some sometimes uh, need to 
break that user story because it can't be completed within a sprint timeline or iteration. So we, we use this spider technique to identify the pattern through which we can split the user story so that you can complete within one iteration. So S stands for spike. If that is a situation, say for example, where the development team is not sure about how to implement a future or maybe um, maybe due to some technical complica complexities or some uncertainties. So what they would like to do is they want to create a spike. They want to build the prototype of the future before implementing the actual uh, um, product. So please note that the spikes may not be a user story and because we have seen like, you know, any user story should add value. That value element is would be missing here in a spike. So because we are we're just going to build a prototype, right? So spike and then P stands for path. Um, let's take the example of payments while checking out the order. We see like there are multiple options available. So I don't want to uh, include all the options in one particular iteration. So what I will do is again, I'll split that user stories into multiple so i'll split based on the options available i can pay by cash i can pay by so each options will be created as separate user stories this is one way by you are splitting splitting the user story by the options or the path which you navigated in the previous slide and i stands for interface say um, uh, say our motive is to enable the customers uh, to order food online, right? So we will have different types of customers and each one would have a different device. Someone may be having a laptop, someone may be want to book, uh, order online through his uh, mobile or app. So in these situations, what you'll do is you split the user stories based on the UI interfaces. That's what, that's what I stands for. And D stands for data types. Um, uh, some good example, I'm thinking about um you all know about cookies or data analytics right so uh, say i want to i'm a you know a restaurant owner i want to improve my business by seeing the data or the trend um from my online sales so i want to generate a lot of reports there through which i can see and enhance my business so there are various reports you can get like uh, you know i want to see who are the customers are repeating to my um, website to order online so i wanted to um, get to know about my loyal customers so that i can give some uh, discounts to them so this is one kind of report or uh, i want to so see the daily sales report which month i have the sales or which day i have the uh, uh, sales in peak either it's a weekday or weekend or i want to see the you know how many customers are satisfied in ordering food online through my portal so there are a lot of uh, things that you can do with the data so again i don't want to do every report in one sprint so maybe i'll add the key reports i'll split the user stories based on what i need as a business owner to first to review and take a call accordingly so i will build i'll prioritize those stories accordingly so yeah, again you are splitting the user stories based on the reports that you need and last but not the least is rules again so each business definitely you'll have some business rules so as i told like you know i want to give some discount or special offers to a loyal customers or maybe i i want to create a rule to uh, to have the customers pick a combo uh, offer or uh, if say for example if uh, the customer orders and uh, and I'm, I'm not able to deliver within 20 minutes of time so the fee is refunded or we would so there are a lot of business rules available again so if there is a, a situation where you have a lot of uh, um, you know business rules in a one particular user story then you try to split that user story based on the business rules this is how we will be splitting the user stories so all we need to keep in mind is so you if you can refer this cake visualizing slicing the cake we always will slice the cake vertically and not horizontally right so as depicted in the picture, vertical piece would have all the like front end, middleware and data layers. If you cut the cake horizontally, meaning like, you know, you'll, you'll have all these things built in, uh, say um, a payment option with one store, you'll be having all these things built in and you're delivering it. But rather than if you're cutting the cake horizontally, what you will do is in one sprint, you will deliver only web page there won't be any connectivity to the back end or you don't have any service created which will actually interact with other system do you think this will add value no so that's why it is always best to 
use this uh, you know model or concept to uh, split your user stories uh, right any questions so far no uh, it's clear thank you great thank you a quick time check um, sundar i believe we are on time so anyone yes, want to have a quick break or you want to uh, okay to continue with this estimation guys folks yep yeah. okay so let's let's talk about uh, briefly how we estimate the user stories i want to keep this uh, discussion very short and sweet the only reason behind this again uh, we have dedicated uh, dedicated sessions planned in um, in in apj space in the upcoming months for agile estimation so you will have really very good detailed information if you register for that session so please uh, watch the apj space uh, we talked about these themes epics user stories earlier so usually the for the for the larger requirements like uh, a theme or epic uh, you will generally we will um, you know estimate based on the t-shirt size model uh, we all know like you know it can be excess small medium large extra, extra large so that's how we uh, you know estimate the larger requirements other than user stories uh, if we use story points to estimate a user story i'll talk about uh, like how we estimate shortly but what we do is look, we play a game called a planning poker with the team to get the user stories estimated um, as i told like you know all these planning poker how you estimate all these stuff will be um, you know discussed in detail in the next session story points are generally a number from the fibonacci series and you would uh, assign to, uh, to the user story based on the relative estimation technique uh, many would have doubt uh, why we need to have the fibonacci series and why just not with the regular numbers right. there are uh, reasons behind it because fibonacci series is non linear it's exponential like if you see here 1 3 5 8 13 21 etc and composed of integers say for example the team is uh, estimating a user story and uh, if we have the option to assign any numbers then it is really difficult for me to decide or choose between 5 6 and 7 because it is so close right uh -huh. so it, it it creates complexity to assign a number to it so that's why we choose the fibonacci series you have this range concept uh, built in uh, in the sequence itself for example uh, if you come up with story points of eight then it means that you are somewhere in the range between five something like that and uh, five and 13. if you come up with a uh, story point of 13 then it means you're ranging between 8 and 21. so it, it gives you the flexibility of picking between the range so that is why we we use fibonacci series for assigning the user stories right so there is a term called velocity uh, velocity it is nothing but uh, the sum of user story points that uh, team delivered in a sprint or iteration say for example um, i pick some 10 stories to deliver in a use uh, in a sprint and each story will have its own user story uh, points and if i sum all together if it is coming say 35 so 35 is the velocity what i do is i add all these story points points and then the sum of these story point is termed as velocity great um, this is what a, a briefly about the user estimation and uh, you might have seen this uh, scrum framework so i want to quickly uh, present this and uh, explain how the user story fits in this flow right so we have talked about uh, this is just to summarize we have talked about user stories and all now i want to visualize how the user story fits into this scrum model so that we'll have a better understanding if you see the product backlog that's in the uh, left extreme left that's where you will have all your larger requirements if you could see i could uh, hold my mouse over so this product backlog this is where you have all the larger requirements right from teams epics user stories right so the next is the sprint planning meeting so in the sprint planning meeting uh, you pick up a card from that product backlog to converse with the team and add confirmation to it so that you can pull it in the sprint backlog um, so this can be also done as part of a story development session so story development session is another informal event um, so 
uh, it's not that in this scrum guidebook but still it is good to have based on your need so what you will do is like in this uh, story development session you pick up these stories from the backlog and uh, you converse and you confirm and keep it ready so that it can be picked up in the next uh, sprint so that's how you are you know keeping the backlog uh, maintained properly so during the sprint what i will do is i'll pick up that user story uh, you know complete the technical task whatever i have specified and then finally if you can see here sprint review that's a formal event um, specified in the scrum guidebook what you will do that is you will actually demonstrate the working software you will you all know like each user story will have some acceptance criteria so you run through that acceptance criteria with the business stakeholders to confirm that yes i have built the right product everything is perfect so if everything is all right and the business owner is happy you will be adding that increment to the pro you know life version there is a term called dod if you can see here right down in the right bottom so it's definition of done in addition to the acceptance criteria acceptance criteria are accept, acceptance criteria are uh, specific to each future like you know you will have your own future uh, we want acceptance criteria for um, say uh, fund transfer or you know uh, adding a beneficiary each of these user story will have their own acceptance criteria whereas if you see this dod dod is applicable for all the user stories it can be common for all the user stories um, we have uh, you know dod defined upfront before the development begins and uh, applies all applies to all the user stories within a sprint um, you can say like it's a checklist and uh, one aspect of that checklist can be quality as part of dod what i will do is i'll check whether the code is peer reviewed whether the unit tests are passed whether all the non functional requirements are met like you know the stability of the application if there are huge number of uh, users accessing the online portal ordering on uh, you know on the same time in parallel so whether my system will be stable enough to accommodate all their requests and then um, maybe some security checks you will uh, scan against uh, some vulnerabilities and whether your code meets the uh, industry standards like that so this is actually a dod right okay any questions okay so user story format finally so we have talked enough about user stories let's see how actually it could look like the format of user story um there would be many templates available but i would like to show the most widely used canextra template here i like this template because it represents an informal natural language description of the future in a product let's see how it is uh, structured so it says that as a type of user i want to do something do some goal so that i will gain some some, some reasons behind it so let's uh, see with example right so add a beneficiary is an example here as a customer okay i want to add a beneficiary so that i can transfer fund so this is a simple um, user story and one another thing i want to highlight is the so that clause is not always mandatory as per mike con i also agree with that because uh, it is not always applicable when you write a user story uh, a classic example would be here uh, as a customer i want to transfer funds so that definitely you don't need to call out that right it can be optional so i want to transfer fund for a number of reasons my personal reason so i don't want to highlight that here so there are cases where you can actually uh, give that reason behind uh, your goal or you can leave it optional based on the user story that you are writing great this is the uh, user story format so what we will do is uh, we have gone through this um, mapping exercise right so maybe since we have time now so uh, I believe we can um, take some time and each one of you can uh, come up with some user stories feel free to unmute your line and you can either share your user stories for any of this um, um, you know you, you you come up with the template whatever we have seen connect to template convert this user story into that template and uh, ex you know we can see how it it is coming right so um, 
you can either chat you you can you can ping that uh, user story format in the chat or if you want to call that out unmute your line and uh, please feel free to um, talk so nothing wrong in uh, coming up with some user story formats so don't worry about it we all are yeah. learning it's a learning phase yeah Absolutely, Kasi. So that's a good one. So probably, guys, if if everyone is, everyone is okay, we'll take five minutes. Let's stay on call. Uh, give a thought through of the scenario what Kasi has posted. Uh, take a piece of paper, post it. Uh, try to craft some uh, story format and probably an unusual line, and then we can quickly run through of the understanding of what we have learned today. That'll be have a good conversation as well. So five minutes from now, if everyone is okay with that. Yep. Brilliant. Great. Great, guys. Okay, I'll mute myself. And we'll quickly grab a cup of water. Probably if, if anyone is ready with their story, can unmute your line? If that's okay. Uh, I wrote some line. So it's like, as a customer, I can search for food of my choice mm -hmm. on online portal. Okay. Right. Uh, next one is, as a customer, I can place order as a guest user. Excellent. Uh, as a customer, I can register to online portal so uh, so that I can utilize the service provided by portal. Uh, as a customer, I can add or remove the uh, food orders in cart. And nice. Next one is as a customer, I can make payment uh, to food portal so that delivery process can be begun. Great. And last Excellent. one is. As a customer, I can track uh, my order. Excellent, great. So, um, what do you feel like, you know, while while you are coming up with this story, Arun? So, so do you feel like, you know, the the regular way of uh, writing the requirement uh, in our earlier days, uh, than like, you know, writing uh, with this in this format? What do you feel is best, and uh, what what do you see as a benefit out of uh, writing in this format? Are you able to? Uh, send yeah. something in this format what i am able to visualize that i feel like a customer like whatever exactly. requirement i have so it uh, make more clarity what exactly. challenges customer can face correct very true so it's like you know a customer centric way these conversations are written in a way that it's it's natural natural language anyone can understand right so very less possibilities of uh, uh, you know, a developer or business development team uh, misinterpreting this, right? Yeah, 
anyway you're going to converse this uh, user story whatever you are written in the card that will be picked up for conversation so you eliminate that misinterpretation as well there that's great cool arun yeah nice anyone else uh sure sir so uh i would say that as a customer i can search for a food item based on its category so that i can add that product i i can add that food item into my cart great and then as a buyer i can see the list of food items under search category so that i can uh, add that item to the cart because i need to see the list of the like uh, of the search items then as mm -hmm. a guest buyer i can proceed to add items to my cart and then uh, proceed to checkout process so that uh, i can place the order without registering on the website if it's a guest uh, guest checkout on the first time right. just placing an order with this guest checkout and you'll get the details on your email like the username right. or yeah. say a system generated password mm -hmm. then i would say as a as a buyer or as a guest uh, a guest buyer or a customer uh, i can uh, i can pay for the products which i have added in my cart so that i can uh complete the order process and Perfect. then i can uh, as a buyer i get a confirmation email uh, of the of the order which i have placed so that i'm sure that my order has been placed successfully excellent excellent right yeah cool very nice so so now you understand like you know for each event which future you are adding a user story right for right excellent right great Nice uh, try, Sudhi. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, hi, Kashi. Hi. Uh, I have written some stories. Actually, yes, this can be guy. elaborated. Uh, but uh, I have written like as a customer, I want to view categories of food to select. Uh, cool. As a customer, I want to view the list of food items in mm -hmm. each category. Mm. Now, as a customer, I can select my choice and add it to cart. Perfect. Yeah. As a cust customer, I can select my delivery address. Right. And as a customer, I can check out from cart. Mm -hmm. And as a customer, I can select uh, the payment method. Mm -hmm. uh, after Very that, good. as a customer, I can get confirmation of my booking. Mm -hmm. As a custom, yeah. So these are the stories I have written, but I could write more on this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So as I told in your card, the user story can be like you know very uh, have Fast, can have yeah. just enough information which you can uh, discuss in detail with the development team um, and uh, converse with them to right. add more absolutely. details. Absolutely, that's perfect. It's nothing wrong in uh, being very short or descriptive. That's good. Good try, Durga. Yeah. Cool. Anyone else? Well, I think you know. I think everything has been said, you know. But then I said, as a <laughs> user, yeah, I want I want to see the menu list, okay, so that I can I can select my products. Cool. As a user, yeah, yeah as a get as a user, I want to register. That's if you don't have a reg if you if you're not already registered. Mm. As a user, I want to select. Payment method, mm. so that I can make a payment. As cool. a user, as a user, I want to select my postcode mm. and um, enter my address, my house number, so that I can. I mean, that that doesn't need any. I very mean, good, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So you'll get the order delivered to your address. So exactly. That's that's then, very good. Yeah, good. Yeah, cool. And then as yeah. as as a user. I want to receive confirmation of my order mm. after making payment. Nice. Yeah. Great. Great uh, user stories all. That's 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 the way that we would be thinking, uh, you know, how to write user stories, um, a high level statement to a small future so that the development team can actually pick up what um, we need in a sprint. So all are very good examples you have tried. That's great. Cool. If anyone want to um try some more yeah please feel free to and this is just one example of a food website so you can think about uh, uh, the projects that you're working on based on the business needs you can all also try offline that's that's great 
okay all i wanted to tell is like you know how to think uh, about writing a user story and uh, we have some great techniques which we learned a um, few minutes before like how to map the user stories how to split it if it is a larger in size and how to estimate so yeah great cool it's nice uh, team okay <clears throat> so let's move on to the question and answer uh, section and i'm happy to address any questions from anyone of you Can, can we see the user story for the question and answers? Uh -huh. Great. Uh, see, um, okay. Let me see. As a uh, as a facilitator, I want to hear some questions so that I can understand your um, understand me so that I can and clarify your uh, uh, questions to have a better understanding. Thank you. <laughs> Good. So yeah. So, uh, so I have one question. So how do we rate uh like the user story? So the user user story points. So what are the parameters on the basis of which we give the user story points to a user story? Great. Yeah, it's a great question. So when you see the user story, you should be estimating based on three factors. One is how large you have to see the size of the user story how large it is say for example you have a you're creating a web page right um, let's see this um, um, add a beneficiary thing so how many fields you have how many fields you need to have that in the UI so size of size is one aspect second thing is complexity how complex is that in terms of technicality like you know, you, you need to have you know a very niche skill, uh, niche technology to implement, uh, to use in order to implement that feature. So basically, size is one thing. How complex technically is other factor, and the third one is what are all the uncertainties or risks involved. So you pick the user story, right? Uh, payment option. So my user story is um, I want to as a customer, I want to use my PayPal account to uh, make the payment. So PayPal account is something <clears throat> is an outside third party, right? So rather than uh, when you compare the uh, user story of making a payment by cash or by using your net banking, it is definitely there are some uncertainties around you using the third party. So you have to see in all these three aspects: size of the uh, work, complexity of the work. And finally, if there are any uncertainties and risks. So these are the three factors I would suggest to think about while estimating the user story. Sure. Uh, so do we consider any, uh, like, uh, I have read it somewhere, or I have attended the, the other, like, other some tutorial, video tutorials. They say that you consider the testing uh, testing efforts and the designing efforts as well uh, while rating a user story. So do Absol we do that? Absolutely. So as I told, uh, you know, we, we have seen this vertical slicing and all, right? So yeah. when mm -hmm. I say user story, when I say a development team, development mm -hmm. team consists of front-end developers, middleware developers, back-end developers, designers, or or testers, who whomever I need to be, uh, you know, they need to be part of the team in order to build this software. So all the efforts, all their efforts would be considered as part of uh, estimating. So that's why we we uh, you know uh, we play a planning poker game so everyone will be given a card and then they will be choosing that as they will be showing that as um, uh, their estimate number and it would be discussed further in detail if, if you're not getting some consensus so i didn't elaborate much because the only reason is we have a dedicated session for uh, uh, estimation in agile estimation so i wanted to keep okay. it short yeah sure. yeah, yeah but okay. great question uh, as to the thank you Yes, sir. Um, what's the, in some cases, we see that apart from epics and we see theme, uh, we, apart from epics, yeah, we see features. So what is mm -hmm. the difference between a feature and an epic? So future or user story are the subset of an epic. Um, if I can navigate through to the uh, examples here, right? So. I told you like, you know, search food 
can be an epic because there are multiple options or ways that you can again searching food as i told you like you can search the food by you know grouping by categories or you can search it by entering the keyword so these yellow color boxes are user stories or futures and the group of these user stories are a part of this search food which is an epic okay. so yeah futures are user stories are subset of epics so basically you will break down that epic to come up with futures or user stories okay thank you yeah. cool yes. good question uh, kashi i have one query like yes, suppose uh, while working on user story some deviation comes up like mm -hmm. payment uh, some payment mm -hmm. method has been chosen and now mm -hmm. deviated to something else so okay when you say deviated we, yeah uh, so their impact on the user story point as well so how we uh, what are the corrective action for these kind of scenarios cool if i understand your question correctly what you say is say for example as the team we decide that we will implement this a uh, particular user story debit card or credit card okay so this is the user story that uh, we say we committed but later while we execute this print uh, the product owner or the business comes and says that hey guys uh, no there is a change in the payment option so let's not do with the debit or credit card for uh, for uh, whatever reason it may be let's let's go with the internet banking so are, are you asking this thing yeah yeah if the scope is changed right yes correct correct so there may be a possibility of uh, you know the uh, you know when we when you pick up some future and while you are executing it there may be some possibilities where the business comes and says that okay uh, come on guys uh, uh, you know um, the world has changed the business uh, um, you know the model has changed so we need to this is not going to add any value um, to the, uh, the product so what the product owner uh, will do is he will discuss with the team and then uh, uh the product and one will make the decision and then uh, we will prioritize if there is a uh, need to uh, drop this particular user story we will drop this user story completely and then we will pick up this internet banking as an alternative so definitely this would impact uh, say for example you go, go to a um, um, restaurant and you order um, um, uh, any any dish right so once you place the order immediately you you change your mind and you call the server or waiter and say that okay hey, uh, hey boss i sorry i don't want to have this uh, dish I, uh, can you get me some something else right so if you are communicating yeah. that early then there is not much impact what you do is here uh, you ordered the food and the food is in progress or the server or the waiter he comes and delivers the food at that time if you are telling that you know hey i i i want a different dish definitely there is a cost involved there's time involved right so that's the situation with sprint uh, with with agile user stories as well so if you uh, committed some user stories to a sprint that's why we have shorter sprint duration right so if you committed something to a sprint most probably that would not change but if there is a change yeah we will we are flexible we adapt to that change but there is definitely some cost involved yeah thank you cool. thanks sarun good question any more from anyone okay i take the silence as no but if you have any questions please feel free to ask and uh, as an agile coach i want to hear the feedback from you on this session so that i can improve myself and um, connect a better session so thank you all and uh, really appreciate your uh, time that you know you have committed to on a sunday evening really appreciate uh, thank you all thanks for your time and you can reach out to me in my email kasi.ram.ukgmail.com and i have given my linkedin profile as well here great thank you all and uh, great thanks, kasi thank Thanks. Thank you for the Thanks. insightful Thanks. session. Um, so, as Kasi did mention, guys, uh, it and and girls probably, you know, it'd be very helpful if you can share the feedback on UVCT where you have registered the session for. Uh, as retrospective is one of the key factor for us to improve and then provide better sessions in the upcoming webinars. So, as said, um, so we are concluding it today. But watch out, there have been exciting sessions lined up uh, till end of uh, this year. The next session is on agile certifications which is coming up on 4th of october 
So um, soon, uh, Sri will be rolling out uh, the the session on UBCT. Watch out more on it, and then uh, we'll be glad. Uh, we're going to have one of our APJ member who's going to run the session as well to talk about more about Agile certifications, which is going to be further more insightful as well. So thanks again, guys, uh, for joining us on a Sunday evening, wherever you're from, and spending 60 minutes of your valuable time. Hope everyone had a good takeaways on your stories. Um, stay safe. Good luck. Thank you, everyone, again. Bye. Thank you all. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Yeah, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers.